hi and welcome back to my channel in today's video you have the next episode of recent reads i somehow still have plenty of books to talk about for the past week even though i decided to download the sims first time ever games free base games free and i've gotten a little obsessed with that but somehow i still read books not really sure how that happened Maybe I'm finding a balance. Who knows? But let's get back to the books because that's what you're here to see. So the first couple I actually finished on Sunday, the day that I usually record these videos and get them up for the next week, obviously. I started the week with these two books. One I read physically, the other I read via audiobook. The first one I'm going to talk about is the one that I read physically. Obviously, I'm not going to read a graphic novel as an audiobook. So in this graphic novel, you have, and I've forgotten the characters' names. I'm terrible with that, especially when it's over a week later. So in this book, you have one student who is the mascot who has a crush on another student. Her name's Regina. Somehow I remember that one. And I remember hers. Hers is Chloe. Anyway... So she has a crush on Regina, tries to ask her out. Regina is popular and manipulative. She wants, she has this whole plan for her life, but her girlfriend has grades that might slip. And so she decides, because she knows that this girl is obsessed with her, to get this girl to tutor her girlfriend. And then they have backstory because they were friends when they were kids. And then, you know, relationship ensues. It doesn't ever end up being a love triangle, which is really interesting. And it ends up being really wholesome and really enjoyable to read about in this story. She's not really the main character. I don't think you really ever get her perspective. Maybe occasionally a few panels. It's mainly these two. Oh, Belle. Her name's Belle. Let's see, Belle of the Ball. Just remember, eventually it came to me. You really just get the story from these two girls and it's adorable it's wholesome you get really good character development even in a graphic novel so this is also the last of the regular comic subscription that I got so at least they went out on the good note before I switched over to the kids subscription next we have the book I read via audiobook and that is Lady Tan's Circle of Women I think I realized when I selected this from book of the month that this was more of a narrative autobiography and those sometimes work sometimes don't work this one sort of worked it wasn't my favorite but I didn't dislike it there was a lot in this woman's life that was really compelling and really engaging and got me to feel things for her and the women around her I didn't 100% engage with it though. So it's not a five star, it's not a four and a half star. It's probably gonna be a low four star. But this tells the story of a real life woman who lived in China in the 15th century, I believe. And her grandparents were doctors and through a series of events, she ends up living with them. One of those events was the death of her mother from an infection that came on because of her bound feet. And that was when she was eight years old. And so she becomes motivated to help other women in various circumstances because part of the culture is a male doctor is never going to see or touch a woman, which makes it really hard to treat her. And she eventually becomes a doctor of some sort. And the book just chronicles her life and different things that happen in her life. Her giving birth to her own, well, her getting married, her giving birth to her own kids, binding her own daughter's feet, encountering other women, things like that. And I thought it was really well done. It just wasn't spectacular. The next book that I read, I read via audiobook, and that is The Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero Cruz. I'm kind of bummed because this book is stunning. So going into this book, I had heard other reviews of people who had had high expectations going in and how the book was fine, 
but just didn't quite meet those expectations and so there was slightly a negative taste for those reviewers. I kind of was the same. It wasn't bad. There were a lot of amazing things in this book. It, it just didn't quite make it. There were s certain things missing with character development, with plot, with the world, but the base level of all those was really good and solid, which makes it a little bit difficult. So this is based on somewhere in Latin America after colonization and later independence. And so you have regular people who are basically descended from the colonizers and then you have two different groups that are sort of fantasy beings, but they're sort of representing the indigenous people. One of them, they have horns and they're strong and fast. I think both of them are strong and fast. But the biggest difference between these two different beings is the horns and then the other one, which one of the main characters is, has a tail and something with the ears. The Nosariel, the ones with the tails, um, they're looked down upon. They're seen as less than and terrible and basically an animal. But the ones with the horns are revered. And that was the first thing that was kind of like, I... I don't understand this. I don't understand the difference. Why even the people with the horns would look at the Nosariel and think you're animals because you have antlers. There are two perspectives in here. You have one, again, whose name I've forgotten. Is anyone surprised? No, but she's the Nosariel. She has lost her mom a long time. No, she lost her dad a long time ago. Recently lost her mom and somehow was compelled to travel over the mountains to meet with her grandmother, who works for these Vargos, the ones with the antlers. Things happen, she ends up attacked by these demon creatures, but she's saved by the people who work for, who her grandmother works for, uh, but she needs a new heart, and so she's connected and indebted to them. So that's that side. Then the other perspective is Ava, who is part Fargo. She's considered slightly less than, even though she's rich and is in a slightly noble family uh, because her mother gave birth out of wedlock and then eventually took her own life. And she ends up connected to that family that the other girl works for. In that other family, there are two brothers. Their age difference is really big. One of the brothers is married, has an adult daughter, but they are trying to have another heir, another male Vargo to try to continue the line. The wife ends up pregnant, but she dies in childbirth. And so then her husband becomes obsessed with trying to bring her back. The whole beginning of this is very slow moving. And I started to wonder, where is this leading? I don't understand where we are going with the plot or how this turns into a series. Eventually, threads come together, plot builds, and it leads somewhere. And by the end of it, I can see where the series is going. But I don't think I'm going to read it and I don't think I'm going to keep this book because the main elements, plot, world building, characters, I can see the sparks of really good of all of that characters, plot, etc. But something holds everything back from getting to that point where that you're like, Oh, this is really good. This is solid. This makes sense. And yes, this is a debut. Yes. I understand that. I just never engaged with everything and it just took too long. And then by the time we got to the end, I'm like, I'm not really sure how all that set up really leads into this motivation for the bigger macro plot of this series. So I don't think this was, is going to stay. I haven't put it through call pile. I don't imagine that it's going to get above a three and a half star. Next we have one that really surprised me and that is the girls I've been. This is one of the SEASL books. I read this physically and this is a book where I wasn't really interested in the premise and I didn't think that I would enjoy this. This was so well done, well put together. You have a conceit where 
the main character, her ex-boyfriend, and still friend, and her new girlfriend, they all have to work together, and they have to go to the bank to deposit this money from school. But then the bank gets robbed. So that's the opening of this. But it turns out that there is so much more going on with this. And the main character has been living with her sister for the past six years. But before that, up until she was 12, she was living with her mom, who is a con artist. And not all that great of a person. And forced her daughter to be part of the con. And they were long con, really involved. She would have to basically transform herself into other girls. Hence the girls I've been. So the story is told with a split timeline. You've got the bank robbery, everything happening there, the tension building, but you've also got her thinking back on memories from different cons with her mother. And you see how that influences her character development. And what I loved about that is that they partially affected the plot by contributing to the actions that she was going to make in the present, trying to you know, save everybody that's in this bank, but they served more for character development and fleshing her out as a character. And I really enjoyed that. It was really well done. The only thing that holds it back just a little bit is at the end, the present plot with the, with the bank robbery, like it goes over a speed bump and then takes off and is so much faster than everything else. I'm like, whoa, throws me for a little bit of a loop. But I do like how it ultimately resolves and where they go from there and the characters, the interactions, really well done. Very surprising. So this is a win of the SASL books. Next we have two more books that I read physically. I have another book that I read audiobook and that is Mask of Mirrors. I did switch to audiobook on that, but I actually finished that yesterday. So that will be in next week's recent reads. So. The first of those books is Shanghai Immortal. I did not put the cover back on it just because this is so stunning and I'm so glad that I enjoyed this book because it's absolutely gorgeous and I don't want to have to get rid of another gorgeous book. So in Shanghai Immortal, you have Lady Jing as the main character. She is basically half vampire, half some other type of spirit, I think a fox spirit. And she lives in the immortal realm, which is basically tied to the earthly realm. Like she could go to the earthly realm if, you know, certain things worked out. She doesn't until later. But anyway, she is about to celebrate her hundredth birthday, which is basically a, for an immortal becoming an adult, but she's not all that mature. I love this type of character, which is not usually the type of character that I like. She is crass. She is carefree. She's a little bit morally gray. And I really enjoyed that. She's the kind of person where if somebody offends her, she's going to lay hands with them. And I thought that A.Y. Chow did that character development really, really well. It's set at a time where in the earthly realm, it is around 1930s. It did take me a little bit to figure that out because there were a few things that I was like, Wait, I thought that was a much more recent book because she mentioned a book in there. I have to look up when that book was published because I think it's older than I think, but everything else of the vibe in the mortal realm definitely gives off 1930s Shanghai. She ends up connected to this mortal who gets a gets passage into basically hell because the king of hell is now her warden. Um, her, no, she's a ward of that um, he's like her dad. Anyway, he gets passage in there and then she gets tasked with taking care of him. And at first she has to battle wanting to suck his blood because she's half vampire and she has to have blood every so often, but she can eat regular things and they can sustain her. And then the plot starts to get going with other things in the world and she ends up connected with this guy who she always calls Mr. Lee. She never calls by his first name. Is he the love interest? Yes. But that's all that I will say. And I just really enjoyed this book. I have not put this through call pile. What's new? But this is definitely bare minimum a high four star. 
probably a four and a half. The last book that I read this past week, I read in a day, I read last Sunday, and that is The Mimicking of Known Successes by Malka Older, who is the sister of Daniel Jose Older, who wrote a book that I really like that's part of the Rick Riordan imprint. Anyway, this book is a sci-fi detective mystery. I did not think that I would really like that. But these two characters, they have history. They were lovers together in college. They had a falling out because the detective, Masa, is probably on the spectrum. It's never coded that way. She's very straight-faced, doesn't do a lot of emotions. She's obsessed with her job. Platy is an academic, and she also makes her own mistakes. But they live on another planet. I don't know if it's ever told which one it is, but they live on this other planet because Earth has been ruined by humans. And the world building is, in this is fantastic. It's so well done. It's so believable, and it fits with this planet and the things that they have to do. Well, at the beginning, somebody goes missing, and Masa, the detective, is tasked with trying to find that out. And it ends up that he's also an academic at the same university as her former lover. And so they end up investigating it together. And Pleity, the narrative is mainly through her. And so she acts sort of like a Watson character in a Sherlock Holmes and Watson only all female and in space on a, on a planet sci-fi. And I really enjoyed this. I probably will read the second one in this. I just... And I think the length of it also worked. This is a novella. It was about 160 some pages and it really worked and I really enjoyed it. So there you go. There are all the books that I read the past week somehow. I don't know how it happened. Um, I got them all done. Some successes, some things that were unexpected, and then some things that were unfortunately disappointing. Thanks so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.